Healthy Rebel Radio is sponsored by the Healthy Rebel app. 300 plus secretly healthy, delicious, mouth-watering dessert and treat recipes made with all natural whole food ingredients. Now available for download on the App Store and Google Play. Find out more details at HealthyRebel.com. Welcome to Healthy Rebel Radio. I'm your host, Dr. David Dyser. I'm here with my Damie Health Healthy Rebel co-founder, Amy Lane. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. So today we're talking about the the five-year recommendations from the USDA for for nutrients and, and nutrition and how to eat for the next five years. Basically, every five years they release some guidelines based on the you know, most updated research in nutrition and what North Americans really should be eating and what they shouldn't be. So, some some of the guidelines I found really interesting. I think it'd be helpful for us to go through them. Okay. Sound good? Sure. You know, in the past, there's been so much debate about these guidelines because, you know, it's been focused on, you know, high meat consumption and, you know, improper balance of carbohydrates and it, just the the whole the whole overview has been off. It, from daily my, dairy. Daily dairy, from my perspective. So there's some few changes this year that are going to rep- be represented over the next five years that I think are really valuable. So let, let's go through them one by one and see and see what you think. So the the goal of the dietary guidelines is to help people improve their eating patterns. So this time they focused on gentle shifts that you can make oh. to improve your, your health, which is sort of what we've been talking about this last couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's cool that they've, been, they've done that and they've in in the guidelines they recommended how to make these shifts and just simple things that you can go through so one of the one of the huge um reasons or one of the huge points they're trying to make this time is is to reduce your calories from sugar which is obviously Mm -hmm. awesome Mm -hmm. and everyone should be doing it but they've put a focus on on beverages which i haven't seen before i'm not sure if it's been highlighted in the past but this time it's there's a huge uh concern about high sugar beverages and people should be reducing them that's good yeah mm. um and it's not just pop right there's so many beverages that you can get caught up with um you know whether it's sports drinks sports drinks or drinking too much juice even mm-hmm. there's a difference between having a smoothie and getting the fiber and, and the all the all the nutrients from from fruit and just drinking straight up juice mm-hmm. uh, a lot of people still drink juice every day mm-hmm I mean, as I sit here and drink a juice with a greens powder in it, but just a, <laughs> just a shot, just a shot, right? So they've put a a focus on reducing calories from from sugar, from extra sugar, and especially in added drinks. But in saying that, they've said to reduce your daily intake of of sugar to to not be more than ten percent of your daily calories. Now, did they put a clarification on what type of sugar? Because people will take that as fruit, and that will be bothersome for me. Well, in certain circumstances they did, and others they didn't. The well, the the main shift that they're saying is added sugars, which is which is good. Mm-hmm. In that same breath, they're saying that artificial sh- sweeteners are okay. No. And how how do you feel about that? I don't feel good about it. You don't do you, do you use artificial sweeteners no. at all? No. No. What do you use? Well, when I do use something, I use stevia. Hmm. But I even try to keep that limited. I try to you know get my sweetness from foods and drinks but in tea i'll have a couple drops of liquid stevia Mm -hmm. or when i need extra sweetness i'll use the liquid stevia yeah but no not none of the chemicals it's it's too scary oh absolutely we've sort of against the the artificial sweeteners for years now Mm -hmm. we we wrote a an article about it the truth about artificial sweeteners on the blog i think the truth will eventually come out but Mm -hmm. it'll be one of those things where it's too late and then all, everyone will act passe about it. Well, of course that was a problem. Kind of like cigarettes. Yeah. yeah. You know, it kind of, everyone just, it was, no, they're fine, they're fine, they're fine. And then it, th- there was like this turning point and then it was almost, they blame the users. Like, right. it's very strange. You have to be in charge of your own health. Do you notice anything different when you use artificial sweeteners? Personally? Yeah. Oh gosh, it's been so many years. I don't, I don't Yeah, know. I suppose. I, I've just heard so many horror stories. I, I forget what they, what they taste like. Like what it's like. 
I think they were extra sweet, right? I don't know. Mm, I don't some know. some have weird tastes. Some. So we're talking about sucralose, ace K, aspartame, uh, and when we wrote about this back in two thousand ten or two thousand nine, somewhere there, it was it was about the research and they were doing sa- safety testing on on rats to see how much they could withstand. Mm-hmm. And before there was ever ever any limit liver damage or gastrointestinal distress, the the levels they had said would be. Uh, extreme for humans and it would be very difficult to get to that level Mm -hmm. now that's fine okay but that doesn't mean it's safe in humans like i don't think you can go from there to okay now it's safe Mm -hmm. in humans because it's not like you hit that point and then the rats start getting sick Mm -hmm. there's gonna be issues leading up to that point and Mm -hmm. they're gonna be more subtle and long term Mm -hmm. who knows what they mean Mm -hmm. so it's like anything i remember when i remember when we were writing this because you were so focused on the long-term consequences Mm -hmm. It's fine, like a rat takes a huge dose of this and they get sick. But what about, you know, the subtle things as we go? Oh, for sure. Because we've got people, you know, drinking Diet Pop every day. I know, it's scary. And switching to Splenda or Sucralose Mm. for coffee. Mm. Um, You know, which has been determined that it was fine since the 90s. But, you know, we've got all a whole population of people with chronic sickness and we don't know why. I know. Scary. Think, okay, is it heavy metals? Is this, mm-hmm. you know, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue? What are these things? Children and adults. Oh, absolutely. You know, so we've got we've got to figure out what these subtle changes are before we can make big recommendations. Completely agree. But you like we were talking about this before a couple weeks ago, and you were saying about how the 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 companies have a hand in these recommendations. And... I, they do, and I know it starts to sound like I have a conspiracy theory mindset. But it doesn't come from suspicion. It comes from fact. Mm -hmm. And when you go back through the government and you look at certain bills and you find out who's donating money where, it's sincere. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's a fact. Well, it's weird when lobbyist is a job. It's just, I can't. You know, so I don't, I feel like uh, the general population, we all have to take our power back and start using common sense because I feel that, Oftentimes, we're not going to be warned about things mm-hmm. until it's too late. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, asbestos was toted by the government. Asbestos, yes, it was you the... would get a government grant. They would help you redo your house. It was the best thing. Mm-hmm. And now we know it killed people mm-hmm. in the most horrific, horrible, torturous way. It, it's a, It's scary as heck, but it was too late. And, yeah. it, and it's too late. It's irreversible. There's nothing you can do. No. If you get mesothelioma, there's nothing. No. So I guess I just have a, a real, you know, if something doesn't make sense to me, if there's not adequate studies or information, or if I know people that have been sick by certain things, or if I consume something or do something and it doesn't feel good, mm-hmm. I use my common sense meter now more than, Oh right. you know, and I think we all have to develop that back. Oh, and it, it hits home when you see these, you know, asbestos removal trucks going around and you think, okay, the government put these into the, bu- put this into the buildings based on what the knowledge they had. And not only that, they said it was the best new thing. Oh. It was the highest new technology. Of course, it's a hundred percent safe. Yes, everyone should have this. And there were literal grants. Like you could get this, like it was the thing to have. Mm-hmm. And even now we have to employ young people to remove it. Oh, that's uh, a whole other topic. Strange strange it's terrible um so you know you lose trust in things like this so it, there there's you have to take everything that's but, but said I don't, in these I don't want anyone to lose trust or become jaded that's not my point no because there's my a lot point, of great things that are coming the point is is you have to use your own common sense if it doesn't feel good mm-hmm. or if you're experiencing negative effects or something seems off then follow that intuition like develop your intuition back right you know we're bombarded by media and everyone telling us what's good and bad but Really, when things come out, it's not that shocking usually. Mm-hmm. What's bad? I, I can't remember the last time something came out that had a negative health effect or a negative impact on health, and I was completely shocked. No. So, you know, yeah, that's true. Like, we know if you give sugar to a child, they act crazy. Right. That's not good. No. There's something wrong there. Mm-hmm. Right? You know, we know these things. So, let's start to use common sense. Mm-hmm. And I think our generation is, is getting pretty good at that. We heard a thing this weekend about mm-hmm. you know how we're sort of, as a generation, jaded because we've been let down in a few different ways. Right. And, uh, you know, it's it maybe may helping us to be better critical thinkers or, mm-hmm. you know, to follow intuition a bit more or right. who knows. We'll, we'll see how it goes. But mm. 
so the next guideline was that they're recommending a switch to more whole grains. You know, consuming more whole grains as opposed to refined or, or you know, white bread, white simple sugars, that type of thing. Seems so delayed, doesn't it? Seems so delayed. and But but it's a good thing. Oh, yeah. Um, promoting whole grains, I think, is... It's always a good thing. Incredible. So when it comes to the amount of calories that the population is getting from whole grains, it's... <laughs> It's or from from grains in general. It's it's still people are getting too too much, too many high carbohydrate, mm-hmm. uh, high carbohydrate foods. Not necessarily whole grains. It's this switch to whole grains that will help reduce the impact mm-hmm. of the high carbohydrate mm-hmm. meals. Mm-hmm. You know because it is you know a, be- a better fiber, a, a slower digest. It doesn't have impact on your blood sugars. Nutrients. Nutrient dense foods, of course. Um, and you know we're obsessed with whole grains here. We've got a we've got a whole grain drawer that. <laughs> well, it's not a, my absolute go-to. It's not a whole grain drawer because within it is about six different kinds of beans and True. lentils. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, there is brown rice. It feels like a whole grain drawer, brown, but that's just me. Brown rice, pasta, mm-hmm. and quinoa mm-hmm. is what it is. But those are what we consider carbs. Yeah, that's our that's the carbs that we enjoy and that we eat and that digest well for us. So and that, then I use the whole grain, the sixteen grain bread, and that's pretty much it. Potatoes. Oh yeah, we love sweet potatoes. potatoes. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But so, no, we rely more on squashes, beans, lentils, mm-hmm. and brown rice pastas when we really want a pasta dish. Absolutely. So mm-hmm. shuttle sh- subtle shift to include more whole grains in the diet. Now, on the negative side of this recommendation, they say that it should be at least it should be a minimum half your grains should be from whole grains. Now, yeah, I, don't, I, don't. I think maybe it's because of cost or uh, what whatever that they didn't go a hundred percent. But it is. It, but I wish that we'd stop being so nervous about offending people. Right. I mean, I had a conversation with a mother last week, and it's undeniable. You know, she's on a, um, she's eliminated wheat and dairy um, and a couple other things from her diet, but she needs to keep pasta and different grains at the forefront of her family, the rest of her, her husband and her boy's diet. Right. Because the reality is, she couldn't afford to feed them mm-hmm. if she couldn't. Now, my perspective is, I'd rather her see, you know, I'd rather her use, um, if she's going to do the shifts, you know, she could use potatoes, mm-hmm. she could use bulk beans, things like that. So, it is a shift. Right. But her her concern is real. It's oh, legitimate, yeah. you know. Absolutely. And so, that's the financial side. You would, you know, I mean, you wouldn't be surprised. With the number of patients that come to me and say, okay, I'm going to do all these things, but, you know, my husband's not going to switch from white bread. Mm, I know. It's shocking to me at this day and age. And, oh, is it ever? And it's like, no, he, there's no way he'll do that. And it's like, okay, well, you know, let's let's at least get blood sugar checked and make sure the regulation is is mm-hmm. good because that it's, it's really hard on the body. Yeah. It's really hard on the body. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, I'd like to see that to go to a minimum 100% whole grains. Let's just get rid of refined sugars and, and refined grains. And processed, yeah. Completely processed, yep. yeah. Um, okay, so the the next recommendation talks about how, you know, we should focus on lean meats. And it, in, in, you know, it, it goes over the recent research about there's, a, you know, uh, increased risk of cancer from processed meats and um but then it doesn't. That it does in the recommendations. It doesn't actually separate red meat and processed meats from lean meats, mm. um, which I think is a major issue for for people because we know that lean or red meats should be reduced, you know, once a month, twice a month, that type of thing, um, because of their impact on your cardiovascular system. Processed meats are just not good for you in general. There's there's very little benefit, and then the way they're processed causes a. a terrible impact on your cardiovascular system and increases the risk of cancer so i think there should have been a, a clear separation with with those two mm-hmm. it's like you know when you get a list coming out in, in december that says okay it's not just smoking that causes cancer anymore we know that there's alcohol there's processed meats um you know and, and red meats they, they put in there as well and then all of a sudden the, the recommendations come out and there's no separation there that says, okay, eggs, chicken, you know, turkey, lean meats, fish, put those ahead and, and put them in two different categories. I know it's strange. It makes you wonder why. Mm-hmm. 
I, I just think they should have done two different categories. Mm, I agree. I, but I also think they should have, you know, put some suggestions on, you know, once or twice a week using beans instead of meat. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I really, I think that it's time. Right. Definitely. Well, you know, in talking about this plant forward idea we've been we've been going through, they they do highlight number one on the on the shifts is that North Americans are not getting enough vegetables and fruits even, mm-hmm. which is excellent. And it's like okay, you need to eat more veggies. So I think that's that's great. I mean, it's not going to be picked up in the media because it's not sexy, but um, I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> of course you do. Well, we all heard your, your health trends for the year, so yeah. we're not surprised. No. At all. I'm super cool. Yeah, super cool. Um, so w- when they when they created the diets that go along with these nutrition guidelines, you can get them at, at uh, health.gov, then you can see that they have, you know, included these shifts in, into the diet, and they've created two separate diets. One is sort of a Mediterranean style, and one is a vegetarian version, which I think is cool because there's a lot of vegetarians who... You know, are just eating high carb. Well, it, being a vegetarian or a vegan doesn't mean you're healthy. Absolutely not. You know, you can go on the PETA website and just pull up, you know, cookies and candies and canned foods and microwavable dinners. And, I mean, you can be just as unhealthy as someone that is. Oh, you can. You know, oh, living on just pure processed meat. So, you know, let's not, I'm not trying to portray <laughs> that either. And they call that pudding vegetarian. So uh, they call it what? Sorry, a pudding vegetarian. A pudding vegetarian. I never heard that. When I went to school, they did anyway. I don't know mm. if they still do. Okay. Uh, I might be dating myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's before my time. But <laughs> back in my day. Yeah, right. Um, but what I'm talking about vegetarian, I'm not talking about any of those aisles. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about. Fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, and legumes. That, that's what I'm talking about mm-hmm. always when mm-hmm. I'm talking about vegetarian or vegan. And no matter what, I think everyone's main focus should be on your plate at all times is vegetables. Mm-hmm. Cook vegetables, raw vegetables, as much as you can possibly enjoy. Same with smoothies. Everything you do, just shove as much vegetables <laughs> in there as possible. I'm serious. I, I emailed a client the other day, um, and she was just, I was telling her, you know, you need to, with lunch and supper this week, main focus, at least two cups of vegetables. Mm-hmm. At least. And she just messaged me back, like, that's a lot of vegetables, <laughs> dot, 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 dot. And I feel like messaging back, like, no, it's not. That's funny, yeah. You know, you can, like, it's not. I know starting out it seems like it, mm-hmm. but it's not. You know, and you'll feel so good. <laughs> you don't have to tell me. <laughs> I hear this all the time. It changed my life. It changed your life. I like it. I you know, it. I used to live off of, you know, one yogurt and a handful of frozen berries. Mm-hmm. You know, for, like, all meals of the day. Yeah. And I was 35 pounds heavier. Right. I remember I remember in Miserable. our first year opening your fridge. Mm-hmm. And being like, oh, I don't think I should have done this. There was one yogurt and one apple. Mm-hmm. And I thought, this isn't a fridge. What is this? <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's very strange. It's terrible. Mm-hmm. Plus, it doesn't work. No, I'm it doesn't. starving. Miserable. Low mm-hmm. brain function. Hormonal, just horrible. Energy levels, just gone and then you know i could have been just mowing down on veggies no restrictive diets are 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 dangerous yes they are so this this next point you're not going to be you're not going to be into it at all you know i i know you were hoping for i mean you don't really care what they say do you well the only reason i do have some bit of care is that there is a large amount of people uh, that look to these resources and trust what they say. And they still think, you know, someone like me or someone like you are radical. Mm-hmm. So they may not believe what we have to say, you know, like something that has a government seal on it. Right. So that's the only reason I care. I don't care what they say because yeah. they can't tell me what to do with my body. I know better. Mm-hmm. But I care for all the people that believe in them mm-hmm. and that will follow these things ignorantly. Definitely. Mm-hmm. So the rec- the, well, the recommend I'm going to get the recommendation I'm going to get to number one on the positive side they they lifted the restriction on on cholesterol because we know that there's so many ways to eat healthy fats to raise your health your your healthy cholesterol in a positive way mm-hmm. 
they still say, you know, watch watch your cholesterol because you don't want to eat too many bad fats. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to focus on the good fats, and there's a big, big uh, section on that, which I think is great. In saying that, they say, because we've listed, lifted the restriction on cholesterol, we want you to go back to full-on dairy, and everyone should be eating more dairy. Yeah. <gasps> And, um, no. yeah, sort of the opposite of where I thought it would go. Dairy. Yeah. For cholesterol, Increased why? Your, well, they want, because the recommendations were before, before to go to, you know, really low fat dairy and not, and the, a certain amount of it. And now they're saying, you know, low fat is good, is better, but you can still eat, you can eat more dairy. And in fact, Americans should be eating more dairy. No. Yeah. So I, I, I think it's a bad move and I. We, you know, we've got a lot to say on this topic, uh, you know, because of the immune reactions to dairy products, cheese, milk, um, that we've seen over the years. Mm-hmm. Very surprised it's moving this way, but still, this is this is all this is all new. Even though we've known that people become lactose intolerant as they age, uh, that's been you know, that's been known as a fact in research for a long time. Children with allergy profiles that are having asthma attacks, you know, and going to outpatients, and they're never told to try eliminating dairy. No. It makes me crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, digestive issues, skin allergies, all that. Just try it. Like, why is that, like, swearing? Why is that so weird? It has to, there has to be another industry component. Yeah, but people will get so offended by it. The other thing I want to say is... You know, when I say to people on the program, you know, if you want to use one of your healthy fats in a day for, you know, to have dairy, you can. Mm-hmm. If you're going to have cheese, it's the size of your thumb. Yeah, it's a very small portion. No one does that. No, I know. And, it, you know, we know that fat has more calories and it's it, the portion sizes. It's addictive also. Oh, absolutely. You know, and then we have the whole other side of things that, you know, I oh, anyway, I, that disappoints me. So, you know, it's going to be, you know, now we have to wait for 2020 before they can, you know, see some immune correlation and how, you know, allergies, asthma, eczema, all these things, first line therapy, remove some of these, mm-hmm. these foods that could be causing an increase in I immune. I mean, you're living proof of it. Oh, absolutely. You thought that you had all these detrimental health problems. Mm-hmm. You eliminated dairy mm-hmm. and it changed your whole. Oh, did it ever? I was, I was you know, on allergy meds for until the age of 21 and, and made the switch at that point and ha- haven't looked back, really. It's been incredible. So, but why is that offensive to offer that suggestion to someone? Because they're so brainwashed that they think that they can't get calcium anywhere else. Yes, because, you know, when the baby boomers were at a certain age, as they say, they were developing and, and helping feed their families, mm-hmm. they were told calcium is number one. Mm-hmm. And now we know that we absorb it quite well, mm-hmm. um, and we can get it from a lot of other places. Mm-hmm. I, this actually brings up the point. I remember when we were suggesting leaning off dairy a couple of years ago, when I was literally a few years ago when I was doing it myself, and mm-hmm. like, wait a second, you know, I don't have acne. I I'm having better sleep, so I'm not congested. All this stuff. Right. I remember a member of our family publicly blasted us for not supporting dairy farmers i know I so know. there's something really ingrained there that it's weird it is you know it, and it's something that has to overcome like i don't know this some... is all being said that this is all with saying that everyone in my family knows that as a baby i was lactose intolerant isn't that strange and then it? it was just okay you know he's over it let's go for it and then um but then they but never we, put those symptoms together with eliminating dairy. Right, and no one was. No one was. It's not, oh, it's no, not I'm their not issue. Saying that. It's, I'm it's, saying it's a microcosm Absolutely. Example. And this is just perpetuating the problem, I think. Oh, yeah. For, for kids especially. Who's, I'm, I'm really thinking about kids. Because there's that A to P triad where you've got kids walking around with asthma who are also rashing constantly. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and then they have seasonal allergies. And or digestive issues. Well, I mean, digestive issues is the... You know, people come to me who have these this triad and no digestive issues, and I talk about dairy. So, well, listen, my stomach doesn't mm-hmm. hurt. Mm-hmm. Well, that's not the whole thing. But then you have people with none of these symptoms, and, and they have major digestive issues. That's the easy thing to treat. Yeah. That's easy. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, okay, this is one thing that you can try that you can, you know, in three weeks you can figure out. I can almost spot dairy now. The, That's interesting. You know, dark circles, mm-hmm. you know, skin rashing, asthma, has the, you know... 
that I, like, there's just I don't know there's a profile there that's just now that I'm I'm clearer on it mm-hmm. I can spot it and you almost feel like suggesting to people you know how you could yeah for sure feel better but yeah. it's again I don't know it's so touchy oh it is it you is. know I have a, her, a friend right now that her one of her children just is get such terrible asthma that he ends up in the hospital you know oh, four no. times a year and I just want to just I want to say mm-hmm. have you tried eliminating dairy but I've had such a strange response to oh, the suggestion. Sure. We should do a whole show on the immune the immune, immune reactions to dairy products and, and exactly. how it happens and why it happens. Yeah, for sure. Um, but you know, there's a lot to go through there. Mm-hmm. The final thing that I wanted to go over was just the the this idea about increasing healthy oils, healthy fats. So they're saying people aren't having enough. Uh, healthy fats. Yes. Really? So no, I find that hard to believe as well. Mm-hmm. So there's, you know, because what there was major restrictions put on fats when we thought fats were making us fat back in the 80s and early 90s. Right, but I thought we all... And then we gone. switched to sugar, and now the intake of sugar amongst, amongst Americans is, is well beyond. Mm-hmm. And the intake of fat is not... The healthy fats are not good. So we have to make a switch from, from un, unhealthy fats to healthy fats. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so... Increasing your polyunsaturated, monounsaturated fats. Olive oil, coconut oil, fish, healthy nuts and seeds. All should be... Avocados. All should be virgin, Mm -hmm. organic, cold-pressed. Definitely. These things are easy to modify, and it's just, you know... You You have to be careful. It sucks. I hate even having to say that. You have to be really careful of what you're buying. Oh, yeah. Especially when things are, quote-unquote, hot. Oh, absolutely. You have to make sure that they're pure. Mm -hmm. So, extra virgin, cold-pressed, organic, Mm -hmm. (laughs) non-GMO. Oh, yeah. So many things in the recommendation go along with, you know, what we've been saying for a long time. There's still lots of areas of improvement, which we'll probably see five years from now when, you know, because just the health research is moving so fast. I know one of the reasons why I wanted to do this show was because of that fact. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, to get all this information out there as quick as, as, quick as we can. Um, so within five years, I'm sure we'll see some of these changes we talked about today come through. I hope so. hope so. That's Healthy Radio. Healthy Rebel Radio, Episode 6. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Amy. Have a great day. See you. Healthy Rebel Radio is presented by the online health and wellness center, DamiHealth.com. Since 2009, Amy Lane has successfully coached thousands of women through her signature program, the Bikini Body Program. Join today to work exclusively with Amy to unveil your greatest yet to be from the inside out. Go to DamiHealth.com for more information. Thank you for listening to Healthy Rebel Radio. Please connect with us on our community pages on Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram, all at the handle at Damie Health. For weekly recipes, articles, and all our episodes straight to your inbox, join our newsletter at DamieHealth.com. You can find all the links discussed in today's episode in the show notes. Thank you for joining us and see you tomorrow.